neither dream nor nightmare, this long-awaited comic book adaptation is a wary walking tour with a tiresome guide. Like an enormous hourglass with two wobbly ends, the Sandman never finds its balance. The Netflix series, based on Neil Gaiman's award-winning comic books and adapted by the author himself, alongside David S. Goyer and Alan Heinberg, is tasked with introducing the streaming service's massive, though slightly shrinking, audience to its elaborate fantasy world, filled with mythical sea. As if edifying the masses about the secret significance of our slumber wasn't tricky enough, the first season can't settle on a simple structure. Certain stories feel episodic, yet rarely fill an entire hour, while the ongoing plot, led by Dream, aka Morpheus, aka Master of Dreams, aka The Sandman, is scattered and shifting. Dream himself, played by Tom Sturridge, is little more than a tour guide. His ambitions change as frequently as his established beliefs, seemingly steered more by the need to introduce Lucifer, Gwendolyn Christie, Death, Kirby Howe Baptiste, and Constantine, Jenna Coleman, than any consistent internal wants or desires. Desire is another character, by the way, played by Mason Alexander Park, but they're less relevant to what happens here than as a tease for future seasons. The Sandman, which runs a teaser trailer after the first episode as if it knows the initial hour offers little reason to keep watching, comes across similarly empty, all promise, little payoff. For die-hard fans, simply seeing game and stoic drawings spring to life may be reason enough to sit through 10 hours of a dream long held and finally realized. Though this is another production with too many scenes set in big, flat, open spaces, where CGI can be easily conjured for a bland kind of grandeur. But anyone yet to be converted may grow tired of sifting through all this glimmering sand for greater meaning, or, you know, any sort of genuine feeling. Getting right to the exposition, the Sandman starts with Dream, first introduces the King of Dreams informing his audience of mortals that the world they insist on calling the real world is only half of their existence. The place they visit when sleeping, doubly called the dreaming, plays just as consequential a role in their lives, and he's in charge of keeping it in order. Dream creates and controls dreams and nightmares. Some of these creations he keeps nearby. Others venture off with his chosen staffers. But as soon as we're told most dreams can't survive in the waking world, it's clear these are rules made to be broken, and wouldn't you know it, one soon breaks. <laughs>